verse 11. It's a story about a man with two sons. A man with two sons. Some of you might study it and say it's a prodigal, about prodigal son. The story really does not only talk about the prodigal son. It talks about the father. It talks about the young son. And it also talks about the elder son. So it's not a story about the prodigal son. Bible readers will say it's a story about, Bible, uh, 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 story about uh, prodigal son. But Bible scholars will tell you that it's a story about the father with two sons. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Then it begins to read here. This is Jesus Christ telling the parable. It says, then he said, a certain man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that fall, falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. That means he gave them the inheritance. Everything which he has, he divides. He says, elder son, you will have this. Big, younger son, you will have this. Verse 13. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country. That means he left the house. And there he wasted his possessions with prodigal give, living. But when he had spent all, there arose severe famine in the land. And he began to be in want. Uh, 15. Then he went and journeyed himself to the citizens of the country. And he set him into his field to feed with swines. That means he was now eating with pigs. Verse 16. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pawns that the swine ate. And no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself... He said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to spare? And I perish with hunger. Verse 18. I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. And I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he, had, he was still a great way off, his father saw him and he had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Two gentlemen in a family being brought up by a father who was responsible, a father who was caring, a father who took them to school, a father who clothed them, a father who gave them food, they never starved, they never went into many troubles living comfortable under this father who was working so hard for his children he was not finding peace if his children were not clothed so you will wake up in the morning go and work so hard so that the children can live a better life so that the children can eat better so that the children can go into good school and get 
good education but one day just one day it never took many days one day one of the sons who are the younger sons he says give me what belongs to me i'm tired of living under your guidance every time i come home late you're always complaining you, you, you i've got rights i've been given rights as a young person i need my rights give me what belongs to me so i can go to a place where i will live under my own conditions father i am tired of living under your influence i am tired of you giving me guidance i want to live the way i want i want to come home anytime i want i want to talk to whoever i want i want to bring whoever i want into this house so give me what belongs to me i'm going to a far country and i'm going to enjoy let me tell you something when the father heard that the father looked at him many times people of god young person young person hear me many times when you speak like that to your parents they will not withhold you they will allow you to go why because you don't know what you don't know where you are going to they have been there before that's why they will be more strict to you that's why they will try to protect you because what hurt them they don't want it to hurt you what destroy them they don't want those things to destroy you but as a young person young people always think the parents are hard on us the pastor is too hard on me my mother is too hard on me my father is too hard give me what belongs to me let me tell you something uh, this young man uh, he was not the only one uh, one day uh, you have also felt like that uh, in your life uh, is this real my father is this real my mother why does he allow me to do whatever i want uh, to go wherever i want yeah other young people are enjoying themselves uh, Friday night, why does my mother want me to get warmer? Give me what belongs to me. Give me my things. Give me my things. I want to live my life the way I want at my own time. Isn't it amazing that most of the time we don't own things, but we have been given access to things. <laughs> this young man did not know that what belongs to his father is not his but it's only the father who has given him access to what he has worked for your father spends some time working hard so that he can pay rent and give you a roof to put your head but you tell him you father i've got rights i want to come anytime i want and you forget that it's not yours you have just been given access to be in there give me what belongs to me even us as elderly people you have a job you don't understand you don't own that job it's god who has given you access to have that job somebody qualified more than you does not have that job but you are employed in that company because god gave you access to be in there we always act as if we have got we own the things we always act we own the position the position is mine no 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 it's god who has given you access you only have access this young man never let the anything under the father's roof as long as he was under the influence of his father he ate well he dressed well he was protected he was never sick you every time he gets sick he gets healed why because he's under the influence of the father and many times when we are under the influence of some anointing or some protection we think it is our own power until you come out the father says no let me allow him to test away from a covering of a parent who carries grace let me give him a test they say it's not many days few days the guy gathered i think he was even saying hey, hey, hey everything no 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 no. listen they, uh, uh, even that old trousers is mine bring it here i want to go with it everything he was collecting collected his luggage then he went to a far country far away he says i want to be far away i'm moving away from Togoza. They will never see me again. I'm coming out. I'm moving away from my village. 
They don't want to say, I don't live. My life is not a village life. They don't understand. I'm a 21st century child. Look at my parents. They grew up typing, using typewriter. We are not using typewriter anymore. We just speak to the, to the gadget and it writes for me. You know nothing, my parents. You elderly people, you old people, you are too old. You don't know our generation. Keep on living. Hallelujah. Keep living. Keep living. He took everything. Went away. And he started parting. I want to put it in a modern language. He started he was going to all night parties. He was going to all night celebrations. There is an event over there. She is there. There is an event over there. He is there. There is everything at night. You are like a night owl. During the day, you are sleeping. At night, you are awake. You are gallivanting from door to door, house by house, house party, white party, black party, whatever party you are part of. But listen to this. Very soon, everything that he got from the father started depleting, started going down. People of God, money doesn't matter how much it is it will get finished if you don't believe me those of you who are working where is your july salary it got finished you celebrate right now we are going to end of september you're already calculating no i'm going to get my money i want to tell you something it doesn't matter how much you celebrate it will get finished <laughs> It will get finished. Hallelujah. The young man uh, did not understand uh, that things will come and things will go. The only thing uh, that will come uh, and will remain forever is the word of God uh, that I preach to you. All the other things uh, shall come to an end. All the other things, uh, it can be a flower, it will wither, it will grass, uh, it will dry up. But the word of God uh, shall live forever. As a young person, uh, even if you have no money and you have the word of God, uh, I want to tell you something. Uh, once you have the word of God, uh, good things will be attracted to your direction. Why? Because the word of God lives in you. It is the only thing uh, that knows how to attract good things to your direction. Things started going down. Started borrowing money for airtime. Started borrowing money for, 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 for a drink. And it got finished. And the friends started saying, hey, we are Tina. People started blocking the boy's number. Instead of ignoring, they just block, block. You try the phone going ting, ting, ting. First of all, they put him on voicemail. They did not want to hear his voice anymore. He was just the number is not available. Please try again later. Then later. They removed him from the network. The number does not exist. So he was no longer a friend anymore. He had no friends, nothing. He had to move and live with pigs. He's now with pigs now. He's now eating what pigs are eating. Listen to me. <laughs> Maybe when I call it pigs, it looks romantic. Let me call it exactly as it is. He was now living with swines. So that means he was now a swine himself. That's Bible. Bible does not say pig. It says swine. Let me tell you something. Uh, 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 these days, there are special soaps. I, I, I've seen people going to the supermarket. They're looking for soaps which have got 98% killing germs. You know? It doesn't matter. You can go and buy those special soaps and wash the pig. Clean it nicely. Two seconds after that, it goes into the mud. It dirties itself. Pigs only eat smelly things. That is exactly the lifestyle of a young man, a young woman, a man and a woman who refused to listen to the voice of God, who refused to take instruction from the parent, who was honoring him, who was telling him, 
Stay here is not yet your time to shine. Stay here and get loaded with information so that the time I release you, no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. No tongue that rises against you in judgment, you cannot condemn. The young man says, no, 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 no. no. My time is now. I want now. I want to marry now. I want a baby now. I want my money now. I want to drink my life. I want to enjoy my life. Time is too short. Let me tell you something. Many who have said time is too short, we have watched them shortening their lives and getting extinguished from this earth. But let me tell you something. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. Started eating with pigs. Until the pigs were saying, mm, mm. every time you move closer, mm, mm. wait, we need to finish. One day, as he was sitting, he was sitting and he was watching the pigs eating. He says, is that how my life has gone down? I'm now living with pigs. One day, the Bible says, but one day, somebody say one day. Say one day. Say my one day <laughs> is today. Say that again. Say my one day is today. Say one day, one day, one day, one day. He came to himself. I need a woman today who is going to come to herself. I need a man today who is going to come to themselves. I need a young person who is going to come to himself and say, no, 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 no. no. This is not the life that God has destined for me. My parent get back to me not to live this kind of life uh, i am not a, a, a loser i am not a weakling uh, i am a strong person uh, i'm a strong child uh, i'm a strong man uh, i'm a strong woman one day one day one day one day he came to himself uh, and he says uh, 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 I, I will go to my father and I will say to my father I have sinned against heaven and I have sinned against you I want one today uh, when you get to your home uh, go to the mirror and look at the mirror and talk to the person uh, that you are seeing in the mirror and tell him you are I prophesy to you you are not a weak young girl uh, you are not a weak young man uh, you are not a weak woman uh, you are not a weak man uh, you are a strong man uh, prophesy to yourself uh, as a young man uh, who spoke to himself uh, he did not need to impress anybody he was alone with the pigs uh, he says i will go to my father and i will say to my father he recited uh, what he was going to say alone uh, without anybody to impress uh, people of god uh, maybe you have been living uh, this life to impress your neighbor i want to tell you today uh, your neighbor is not impressed about anything about you because your neighbor is minding their own business uh, stop impressing people and start prophesying to your own life uh, and say i myself uh, i am a strong person uh, begin to prophesy to yourself there right now say i am a strong person uh, i'm not a weak person uh, i am not a loser i am a winner I am not weaker. I am strong. I am a strong overcomer. In the mighty name of Jesus. Listen to me. He had a conversation with himself. Himself. He says, How many of my father's servants are enjoying life today? And I'm living with pigs. How many of my father's servants have enough food to even give to their children and i am not a servant in my father but i'm living with pigs you know why he was thinking like that he was assessing his decisions which he makes when he is angry never ever make a decision when you are angry because it might not be reversible Glory to God. It's a foolish father who does not care about what the children ate. But I remember what I, how I started. I said, this was a caring father. This was a loving father who brought up these children. See, this guy came to himself. And he says, I will arise. I will arise. And go to my father. Can you read it? Verse 18. Say, read it. One, two, three, go. 
Amen. I will arise and I will go to my father. I will arise and I'm going to go back. I will arise. I'm going to go back to prayer. I will arise. I'm going to go back to fasting. I will arise. I'm going to go back again to serving God. I will arise. I'm going to go back to church again. Yes. During lockdown, things have not been working very well. But listen to me. Every time you are away from the presence of God, the enemy brings you backwards uh, even with your spiritual life uh, but you must be able to tell yourself uh, i'm going to be like that young man uh, who says listen uh, doesn't matter the circumstances are uh, got me on the on, on the ground uh, but my back is not on the ground i will arise uh, and i will go into my father and i will say to my father i am back again father i want to come and serve again i want to come and worship again i want to come and pray again i want to come and and and, and do the work of God. Listen to me. You must say, you must be able to tell yourself, uh, I'm arising uh, back to holiness again. Uh, I'm arising uh, back to righteousness again. Uh, yes, uh, I've been living life. Uh, the only thing that people know is me carrying a Bible and my identification of a Christian uh, is only when I'm carrying a Bible. But my behavior is changing. Why? Because I'm arising again. Uh, I'm going back to holiness. Uh, things which are dirty, I reject them. Uh, they are not for me. I am not a swine. Uh, I am a child of God. Uh, I am not a swine. Uh, I am a believer in Christ. Uh, I'm a reader of the word of God. Uh, I believe the word of God. Uh, I will go for what is of God. I will arise. Somebody say, I'm arising. Say, I'm arising. Say, I'm arising. I'm going back uh, to witnessing again. I'm going back uh, to holy living again. You know, sometimes... People who come to church get surprised why people will say, Ah, are you the one who's carrying the Bible? Can you imagine? You have been coming to church for two years and people get shocked that, Ah, you also read the Bible. It's not like they've never caught you reading the Bible, but they've been reading the lifestyle. And they don't, listen to me. There are people right now who are in street corner somewhere, some of them really, it's not like, they are not bad people, but they were not given the rightful information or rightful teaching. So they are just drunkards, they water, but they never hate anybody. They just need someone to tell them about God. But let me tell you, sometimes the same people will tell you that, uh, when, uh, you can't be a Christian. When. The way you live, it can be. So it means your lifestyle is a Bible that other people are reading about you. Are we together? So the young man said, as I was eating with pigs, people were reading my life. But now, I'm arising. I'm arising. And I'm going back to my father. And I've say, I will say, I've sinned against you, and I've sinned against heaven. Why did he say, I've sinned against heaven? This boy never cursed God at all in the whole story. He just said, Father, give me what belongs to me. I'm going away. But later, he says, I've sinned against heaven. And I've sinned against you, my father. That means he knew that the father is bringing him in the ways of God. Are we together? <laughs> he knew mama is bringing me in the ways of God. So when I forsake the teaching, it means I'm forsaking God. Because the teachings are not only for my mother. My mother is getting the teachings from the word of God, which is the life of God. Now, when I go back, I'm going to apologize to God and I'm going to apologize to my father. And I'll say, I've sinned against heaven and I've sinned against my father. But let me tell you something. A miracle happened there. When he said, I will arise. As he began to rise up, to go to the father. The father also left the compound to meet him. Are we together? A miracle happened. That was a miracle. What is this miracle? God will not come and drag you out of your mess. You need to identify 
identify your mess and say, mess, I'm leaving you. I'm going back to God. As you make a move, God makes a move. Are you understanding me? As you make a move, God also makes a move. God says, the decision you have made, I agree with it. I'm going to bless you more than what you are expecting. Why? Because you have made a move. You have denied the things of the world and you took up the things of God. I am God. I am going to demonstrate to the world that you have chosen the father of all blessings. As he moved, came out, stood up, out of his mess. The father also left. And why? Because in this life, you will have to meet somewhere with your blessing. Your blessing will not find you in your mess. Because the blessings don't dwell in mess. You have to come out of the mess. And your blessing, your destiny will meet you. You cannot continue living double standards and expect a full blessing from God. Yes, you'll be alive. Yes, you'll breathe. God does not kill people. You will still be breathing and living. But there are things that you will not have access to which are being blocked by the behaviors, by the lifestyles, by the attitudes towards God, towards the things of God. Are we together? Somebody shout hallelujah. I say somebody shout hallelujah. God will not meet you in your mess. You will have to acknowledge your mess and get yourself out and say, I'm coming out. I'm coming out of my mess. I'm coming out of this condition. I'm coming out of this kind of talk. That's not for me. I'm coming out of this secret life. This life is tormenting me. I know you don't live secret lives, but let me tell you about secret lives. Secret lives have a way of taking away your joy. I'm telling you, as long as you have not opened up about what is troubling you, you are living a secret life. And that becomes a, like somebody's holding a gun on you. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'll tell, give you an example. Maybe if to balance up, let me give two examples. You are a man. You are married. And you have a baby. And you have not told your wife. It's a secret life. And that thing will be tormenting you for the rest of your life. Every time you see a unknown number, you're already suspecting. Ah. You're going outside to answer the phone outside. Is that normal? It's not normal. Oh, you are a mother and you have a baby. And suddenly, the baby does not belong to the house. It belongs next door. <laughs> you're saying... I will live with this secret for the rest of my life. Who will think you have joined a good gym? And people will come and ask you, so uh, listen, wh wh where are you gyming these days? It looks like you, 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 you are losing weight. <laughs> it's that baby that you have not disclosed. <laughs> it's a secret life. Secret lives are dangerous. They will torment you. You will portray a life which is not yours. Because you live it. But let me say something. The Bible says, when Christ has set you free, you are free indeed. Are we together? I, I don't expect my young people in the church now to be really living secretive lives. You are still at a tender age that if there's something that is troubling you, speak it up now and God will immediately come in and rescue you. Amen. Are we together? Are, are, are we together? Look at this young man. This young man says, I, I, I'm living. He never wrote to the father that he's eating with pigs. But he said, I will say to myself, I have sinned. I'm rising up and I'm going to meet up God. And wh why am I rising up? I'm rising up. I'm making a decision. I'm leaving my mess and I'm rising away from my mess so that I can meet up with my answers. 
If you read your Bible properly, you discover Jesus in the book of John. Jesus goes uh, 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 to Mother and Mary when their brother had died, called Lazarus. When he arrived at the grave, Jesus demonstrates another sense of like he doesn't respect the dead or whatever. He says, he doesn't say, open up the grave, let me go and pray for him. No. He says, open up the grave. Then he says, Lazarus, come forth, come out. This is a dead person. He says, no, I'm not going to come and remove you from your death. You need to come out from death, dead things and come and meet me. I'll give you life. That's a good illustration. Lazarus, come forth. Daughter, come out. Son, come out. Mother, come out. Father, come out. When you come out, yes, you might come out still bound in grave clothes, still bound with sin. But let me tell you something. The fact that you made a decision, you are about to be loosed. He says, Lazarus, come out. As he came out, you are still bound on grave clothes. And he says, loose him and let him go. And suddenly, Lazarus was loosed. And everybody came to see a man who Jesus raised from the dead. But the miracle came when he says, come forth. If Lazarus remained and said, no, who does he think he is? Let him come inside. He was going to remain in the grave clothes, dying, smelling and stinking because he was already smelling for four days. But he responded to the word of come forth. Come out. Are you willing to come forth? I'm speaking to a man and a woman of, uh, uh, in this house. Are you willing to come forth? I said, are you willing to come forth? When you come forth, God will meet you. Hallelujah. God will meet you. Your grave clothes, that represents all the filthy rags, that re represent your yesterday, that represent uh, your, 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 your evil, your bed yesterday, your dark cloud yesterday. By the way, I, I don't know who this person, the, the person who started a diary did not explain to the people what a diary is for. But I think it was corrected later. It was now corrected as a year planner. This diary business is always dragging you to your past. People have diaries. What happened to me four years ago? Every time I think about it, I just cry alone. When you feel like you've not cried for a long time, you take your diary and go and sit alone and start reading. <laughs> I wonder where you went to. I wonder where she went to. You know that job that I used to do seven years ago? Hey, you know, this was a nice job. I don't know why the... Is taking you to your past. Philippians 3 says, uh, forgetting the things that are behind, uh, pressing on uh, towards the things uh, that are ahead uh, to the high calling of God. Forget your yesterday. Yesterday is over. This young man uh, looked at yesterday. Uh, says, yesterday I took all my belongings. Uh, yesterday uh, I went to live uh, a riotous life. Uh, I was dancing in every event. Uh, yesterday uh, I was eating with sons. Uh, but let me tell you something. Uh, I'm not going to allow my yesterday to relieve my today but I'm going to take my today into my future into my tomorrow I will arise and I will go into my father and I will say father I have sinned against you and I've sinned against heaven accept me again says I'm pressing on yes yesterday was not nice but I'm pressing on yesterday was not good but I'm pressing on if you are willing to come forth, God is willing to loose you from your grave cloth. Lastly, a man called Joshua in the book of Joshua, Joshua 1. The Lord appeared to Joshua. He says, Joshua, my servant Moses is dead. Therefore, arise my servant Moses I know that you are relying on Moses I know that Moses was somebody who but Moses is dead now I know that maybe during lockdown uh, 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 you lost your job uh, but let me tell you something that is a Moses Moses is dead now therefore arise 
Stop mourning about what happened yesterday. Stop mourning about the, 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 the things that you lost yesterday. Arise. It's time to arise. I know Moses is dead. Start again. Joshua. I know you could have failed the examination. Start again. Now therefore, arise. Start again. Somebody say start again. Listen, I know maybe the business got finished during lockdown. Their business is not shut down. Now don't worry about that. Start again. Moses is dead. Now therefore, start again. Therefore, arise again. When you arise again, God says, I'm going to meet you at your point of your destination. Starting again requires courage. Starting again requires strength. He says, Moses, uh, Joshua, I want you to be courageous. I want you to be strong and be courageous. I need young men. I need young women. I need mothers and fathers here who are going to be courageous to overcome situations. Situations may look like they are going backwards, but courage will make you press on. Courage will make you press on. I want to tell you, cars will be bought again. Houses will be built again. Marriages will happen again. <laughs> Jobs uh, shall be gotten again. Businesses uh, shall be started again. Profit uh, shall come again. Degrees uh, shall be gotten again. Diplomas uh, shall be attained again. Do not look back. Start pressing on. Start again. And have courage to start again. I know what you went through. But Moses is dead. I said, I know what you went through. But Moses is dead. Press on for a new beginning. Press on to pray again. Press on to read the word of God again. Press on to believe the word of God again. Press on to give in the house of God again. To give your money, to give your time, to give your service in God's house. You are pressing on. You are pressing on. You tell yourself, yes, I belong to Pine Praise Ministry. But just when I'm sitting in my house, let me ask myself a question. Who really cleans the chair which I'm sitting on? Because every time I come to church, I find everything is in order. I will arise and I will do it again. Are we together? We are sitting over there and say, yes, I see the church. There are many people who come to Pine Praise Ministries. Who really tells them about Jesus for them to come to church? If you look around, and you see, I've never told anybody here, but people are here. Say, I'm also going to tell my own. They will be here. I'm becoming a witness for Jesus Christ. I'm arising. I'm arising. I'm arising again. When you are now in the place where God wants you, God will meet you with your destiny. Rise up on your feet right now. Rise up on your feet. I want you to declare right now. And your declaration is, Father, I'm courageous to start again. I'm courageous to press again. I'm courageous to pray again. I'm courageous to love again. I'm courageous to serve again. I'm courageous to sing again, to celebrate Jesus again.